I'm Stan Sigmund. I'm a retired CEO from AT&T Mobility, formerly Singular. I enjoyed a 42-year um, career, and I enjoyed all of it. But the highlight of my career was it began in 1985 when I left the traditional telephone companies and came into uh, the wireless industry called Cellular at that time. When I joined Southwestern Bell Mobile Systems in 1985, we had 3,000 customers nationwide. We had about three and a half million dollars in annual revenues nationwide. And when I retired, we had 65 million customers and 50 billion dollars in revenues. So I enjoyed a very fast, rapid, and wonderful experience in wireless for 20 years. In 1970, uh, AT&T, before divestiture, decided to make a movie about a telephone man. And they, the story was around five telephone repairmen, and I was one of them. And Stan Sigmund works to see to it that the phone lines in his territory are continually working to carry his customers' calls. When I look at that commercial and I see those wires, you know, I had no idea that someday I'd be working in an industry where there'd be telecommunications without wires. Keep in mind, when I started in wireless, a phone cost $2,500, and all you could do with it was talk, and the talking on it cost you 50 cents a minute. And now look what you're capable of doing. And I think the, d the device that really changed the marketplace forever was the iPhone, uh, the smartphone. And when we introduced the iPhone in uh, 2007, in summer of 2007, I think that's been a uh, a real revolution, not just an evolution, but a real revolution to the industry. The iPhone decision was the most difficult decision I made in my corporate career because I believe that it had the potential to really change the industry significantly. I just didn't know how significant and I didn't have clar clarity of the impact it would have on our own company. In 2005, and I received a call in my home in Atlanta uh, late one evening from Steve Jobs. And we had just introduced uh, a Motorola phone that had iTunes on it. And Steve had a vision of doing more uh, with a device than what the Motorola device was doing and wanted to talk to me about it. You gotta keep in mind when we first decided to, to come together and develop the iPhone, we didn't have a prototype. I mean, Steve and I had not seen a phone. We just had confidence in each of our respective organizations that we could do this. So it was a big gamble in many respects. Quite honestly, I did it because I have that much faith in Steve Jobs, that he told me what he could do and he told me what he would do and, and I believed him and, and I think history will show that that was a good decision. Today, thousands of trendsetters are finally getting the chance to buy the most hyped cell phone in history. The day that we launched the iPhone was the uh, beginning of the end of a lot of hard work and, and obviously when you see the lines going around the stores and out in the streets and all the media coverage that yep, we got from it, it's, it's exciting. The acquisition of AT&T Wireless, it was a 41 billion dollar all cash transaction. It was at the time, and it may be still, it was the largest all cash transaction uh, in the history of, you know, corporate America. Today about the $41 billion merger between Singular and AT&T Wireless, it will create the largest cell phone. I signed the check. I, I remember the night, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and I signed that check. And when you sign a check for $41 billion, your hand kind of trembles, you know, because I knew that I'd made a lot of promises. I never had a doubt that we wasn't going to keep our promises. I knew we had hard work in front of us, but we set timelines, we set expectations, and we met or exceeded every one of them.